If we relied only on natural snow, some resorts wouldn't be able to open at all, and others wouldn't be able to run their base areas. But thankfully, we've got snowmaking. Let's see how it works. The snowmaking system is similar to an iceberg. 90% of it isn't visible. Resorts work year round to maintain the infrastructure necessary to pump water and air uphill, with some resorts able to pump 12,000 gallons a minute. But where does all this water and air go? Right to a snow gun. The function of a snow gun is to blow tiny water droplets into the air and let them freeze and fall to the ground. Now there are two types of snow guns, each with their benefits and drawbacks. The first type of snow gun combines compressed air and water. The compressed air blows with such force that it splits the water stream into tiny little droplets. And that compressed air also serves another purpose, which is to launch the water droplets high into the sky and allow them time to freeze. Now this type of snow gun is less expensive, but it also requires two inputs, water and compressed air. The second type of snow gun only requires one input, water. Instead of compressed air, this one uses an electric fan to blow the stream of water into tiny drops that freeze and fall to the ground. This is called an airless snow gun and has the benefit of not requiring a hose for compressed air, but it does require an electrical connection to run the fan. However, before turning on the snow guns, we've got to check with Mother Nature first. And the best measure of snowmaking conditions is something called the wet bulb temperature, which is the combination of the actual air temperature and the amount of moisture in the air. Snowmaking is most efficient when the wet bulb temperature is well below freezing. However, we can still make snow when the temperature is near freezing as long as the air is very dry. For example, an air temperature of 32 degrees along with very dry air at 25% humidity creates a wet bulb temperature about 10 degrees colder in the low 20s, which is well below freezing and plenty cold enough for efficient snowmaking. Humidity is a key part in determining the wet bulb temperature, and here's why. Water drops freeze more quickly when the air is dry, and this is due to evaporation. This effect is called evaporational cooling, and it's the same thing that you experience when you get out of the shower, have a few water drops on your skin, and it feels very chilly when you go into that drier room. Mountains that are further from the oceans tend to have drier air and climates, and therefore better snowmaking conditions but we can still find good snowmaking conditions in the rest of the country, especially after a cold front moves through. The temperatures drop, humidity lowers, and high pressure takes control of the weather. The technology and science is fun to learn about, but it would be totally useless if we didn't have some hardworking folks moving equipment around. Yeah, I'm from New Zealand and I travel the world making snow, and then when the snowmaking's finished, I jump in a cat and uh, groom the snow. Uh, for ski resorts. Typical, wake up at 10.30 at night, head to the mountain, check the weather, do a shift change, and then throughout the night we're monitoring guns. And as the sun rises, we're drying up the guns and providing a good quality product for the skiers and snowboarders that come out for the day riding. As a snowmaker from New Zealand, I'm thrilled because doing this job it allows me to work around the world, to travel while I'm working, to get to meet the locals and experience local culture, and uh, yeah, it's just awesome. Now that's an awesome job. In part two of our snowmaking series, we'll take a look at the economics and figure out how much it costs to run a resort snowmaking system. For OnTheSnow.com, I'm meteorologist Joel Gratz.